In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these spooky Halloween signs. So the first thing I did when creating the spooky Halloween sign is to get some inspiration online. So I've created like a mood board of all the stuff that I quite like. I quite like this bold text and stuff like that. So I want to try that out with a V-bit. I think with a V-carved toolpath, that will look really good and really suit this project. So now that I've got my inspiration, I'm going to do some sketches and then jump into the software. Now we've opened up V-carved desktop. So you can create this, these files in V-carved desktop, V-carved pro or Aspire, or in the trial versions of those softwares. So if we go in and we create a new file. Okay, so it's going to be a single sided job, um, the job size. So we're just going to put something in. It's fairly random to start off with. But basically what we're going to do is we're just going to create all our vectors and our design how we want it. And then we're going to go measure our material and then come back in and resize the vectors. We're going to zero off the material surface and the XY data is in the bottom left. Uh, we can just leave it on standard modeling resolution as we won't be using any models for this and click OK. OK, so the first thing we want to do is go into the draw line polyline tool. So we click on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the top and the bottom of the sign um, with some lines and then we're going to do the sides of the sign. OK, so if we just do some rough lines. What we can spacebar to um, end drawing the polyline tool, select um, that line and then we can just copy it. So control C, control V, and then we can basically press the down arrow. If you want bigger movements, you can actually press the shift key like I've done now, which will give you um, bigger movements in while pressing the down arrow. So those look quite good. If we go back into there, if we hover over the point, it will actually attach to the point and then click. And then we're just going to draw some vectors here. And join that back up. Press the space bar to stop drawing the line so we can draw the next side. And join them up. Press space. Close out of that. Okay, so to make our lives easier for later on, we're actually going to join up these vectors. So if you select the vectors you want, close vectors with a line. Just need to go around and do that. Okay, um, what we now can do is actually in, so what we want to do is Go into node mode, so if we press N on the keyboard, this will bring up all the nodes of the vectors. So this is really handy if you want to edit the shape of the vector. We can actually right click on this line and insert a point. Basically what I'm trying to do is make the top and the bottom of the sign a bit more rugged, so bring them in a bit. So insert a point, bring it down, and then insert a point somewhere around here. Obviously with all these vectors, they don't have to be perfect first time. We can always mess around with them later on. Okay, the next part that I'm going to do is actually start creating some of the V-carve bits. So basically what we want to do is create some triangles um, and then the V-bit is going to go within those triangles and create uh, basically notches or cut out bits of wood. So we go in here. Just going to go around and where the points come down, like here on the sign, at the edges of the sign, we just want to follow those and just go beyond them a little bit. Just create the V-card bits on here as well. I'm just going to create a bit of a gash on that one, so that's a bit further in. 
So to create some um, little notches and little cutout bits on the surface, we're just going to create some little groups of vectors. These can be really just rough and ragged. Don't need to spend too much time on these. Okay, so they're all done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to select the vectors and we're going to use the toolpath preview to see how they're looking so far. This is a really helpful tool to see where in your design you can make changes and make it more in line with what you want. It's just going to go across the toolpaths tab and then go into the VCarve toolpath. Okay, so I've just uh, deselected the flat depth so we just we don't want a flat depth at the moment starting on the material surface I've selected um, this 60 degree V bit because um, I know that this tool works quite well obviously if we want the cuts to go deeper we can um, select a different V bit but I've selected that for the time being okay we don't need any of that selected we don't need to protect it onto the 3d model we do need to select all the vectors we want. If we hit calculate. Okay, so um, there's actually one vector where it isn't fully joined up. So there's basically um, the nodes aren't joined. So if we press OK, we can preview the vectors and then we can see the one that isn't joined up and then we can join it up. Press OK. Okay, so um, it's actually saying that we're going to be cutting through the material because basically the triangles are too big because the V bit's going to come in and um, take out all of that space. So what we're going to have to do is make those triangles a bit smaller or a bit closer to the edge. But if we just preview it for the time being and then we can go in and change those things. Preview that toolpath. And then we can actually turn the vectors on here. So basically I can see that this, these are the vectors that aren't joined up properly and then these two are the ones that are going too deep and they're going to cut through our material. So what we can do is close out of the toolpath preview, deselect those, right click on here is join with line, so that's that problem sorted. With these, we're going to press N on the keyboard to go into no mode to make the triangle smaller. Select that one. And then what we can now do is come back into the toolpath, select that vector as well, and then recalculate it again. going to continue on that. So basically this is just telling us that there's one intersection but I'm not too worried about that at the moment. If we go calculate, continue and then click OK. Okay so we're still cutting through the material so let's just go in make those triangles a lot smaller. Press N on the keyboard. What we can also do is bring those in as well. Because basically we only want to cut in this bit. But if we delete Okay, if we go into the 2D view, because um, those node parts were getting quite fiddly, we can actually delete some of these points. Okay, make those smaller. Go back into the 3D view and then see how that comes out. Okay, 
Let's hit calculate, reset. Cool, brilliant, that's all looking quite good. And then I'm just gonna basically do the profile toolpath as well, because at the moment we've only done the V-card bits to actually show what the sign will look like. Just close out of that, click the profile toolpath. Okay, so we wanna cut all the way through the material. So if we put Z plus 0.5 millimeters, Z is basically the depth of the material, which you can see there, which is 20 mil, and then we'll add in 0.5 to make sure it cuts all the way through. I've selected, um, so this quarter inch in mat M mil, which I'm gonna use in the final cut, um, which is a really good um, tool to use for the profile toolpath. So we're gonna select that one, I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna calculate that. So yeah, we're, that warning is to show that it's gonna cut all the way through, so click OK, and then preview that toolpath. Okay, if we double click anywhere outside of the thing that we're actually cutting, basically the waste material, it's gonna get rid of it in the 3D view, so then you can see what it's gonna look like. Cool, so that's looking good. So what, what we're gonna do next is we're actually gonna add the text to it. So we click out of that. So we need to go into the t draw text tool here. So I found this font earlier, Brizzle, which is a really nice font, which suits the Halloween kind of design that we want. Um, so you can download that um, online. So if we type in our text, so for this sign, we're gonna put in zombies close out of that. So with this we just want to scale the font to the size that we want. Okay that's it's looking quite good. I'm actually going to move some of these vectors around. Obviously when we drew them we didn't have the text there so we didn't know exactly where they were going to go. We don't really want them overlapping with the text. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, next I'm going to use the distort tool. This is going to make the font a bit more um, rustic and rugged. So if we go into that, we're going to click the bounding box option and then click apply. That will basically then put a box around the vectors we've selected and then you can edit, click and move these nodes around to get the effect you want. That's uh, quite good. So yeah, as you can see, it's distorting the text, uh, which is quite good. That's looking good. So we want to close out of that. And then basically what we want to do is click onto the text, right click. And then if we click convert, um, convert to vectors, that will basically mean that we can edit each one individually and also we can resize it as well. So I'm just going to go in and resize some of these vectors. So we're just clicking on there, resize it. This is really good as well. So if there's any vectors in the font that you don't want in there, you can always click on them and delete them. Resize this up a bit, you can rotate as well. Okay. Gonna move that in a bit. Obviously on these parts it's kind of up to you, it's kind of pretty subjective, but I'm quite liking where that is now. So I'm just going to select all the vectors and group them. That means that then when we're doing the toolpaths and stuff, you just click on one point and it selects all the vectors. So if we go back over, go back into the VCarve toolpath, we're going to be using the same tool. These settings are all the same. Hit calculate. Then we can preview that visible toolpath. Okay, what we'll also need to do as well is actually re recalculate this V-carve toolpath because we've actually moved some of the vectors. So we 
hit calculate on that. And if we reset the pre preview and then preview all toolpaths, that's going through the uh, VCarve toolpaths and the profile one. Double click to get rid of the waste material. Cool, that's looking really good. Um, I really like the look of that. So, um, yeah, what we're going to do next is we're going to measure off our, our material and then go back into the software, put our material size in and then resize all the vectors and stuff and do our toolpaths. Cool, so we've got the design all done. So now I'm looking for my piece of wood. I need a wood that's gonna fit within the desktop software. So 24 inches by 24 inches. So yeah, this one looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, this piece of wood, I think it's gonna be quite good for the V carving and the profile toolpath. And then the stain we're gonna put on it as well is also gonna soak in quite well. So let's take it over to the machine. Cool, as you can see, it's definitely going to fit on the machine bed. So there's plenty of room for that and we can screw it down onto the machine bed as well. So let's just measure it up. Okay, so that's 400 by 300. And then 18 on there. Cool, now that we've measured up the material, it's time to jump back into the software and resize the vectors. So if we go across to here, go into the job dimensions and original uh, origin <laughs> uh, file operations. And then, so we want a width of 400, a height of 300 and a thickness of 18. And if we press okay, it's okay on that. Okay, as you can see, the vectors are now outside our job area. So what we need to do is just scale them down. So I'm just going to select all the vectors, click, scale them down. I still want the width of that though. So I'm just going to try and make it as wide as I can. Okay, and then align to the middle of our material. That way we've got plenty of rooms for hold downs or screws and stuff like that. So what, what we need to do next is uh, look at any adjustments that we want to make. So this is the kind of last bit that we can really make any adjustments to the vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, add a line in under the zombies just to highlight it a bit more and add some more stuff to the sign. So if we move those down, go into the polyline tool again and draw a line across here. This can be pretty rough, but I just want it to be quite a small line. It varies. And then to close that vector off, we can actually press the control key and then click. And that's all closed off and then spacebar to come out of that. So we close that down, that vector's all done. We can then move these around to where we want them to be. And then, so this bit is a bit close to there. So what I'm gonna do is just go, on, go into the outside vector, press the N key for node mode. And then we can actually move around this point here. So it's more centralized. Bring it down a bit. Press N to come out of that. And then we can move that vector across. Okay, I'm happy with that, that's all looking good. So if we just preview the, or add in the line to the VCARB toolpath, calculate that, press OK, that's all fine. And then we can preview all toolpaths just to make sure that, but what we need to do, um, I've made a mistake there. So what we need to do is actually recal recalculate all the toolpaths. So if we click this button, now recalculate all of them. So now this uh, on the B carb toolpath, it will cut through the material. This is to say that on the profile toolpath, it's going to cut through the material as well. And then they've recalculated there. So what we need to do is reset the preview and then preview all toolpaths. OK, 
Okay, as you can see on the first V V carved toolpath, there's a little hole in there. So what I'm actually going to do is add a flat depth in to this toolpath. So of uh, 16. That will basically mean that it will just it won't cut any lower than 16. So we'll have two millimeters on the back of the material. Calculate that. Then reset. Preview all toolpaths again. So as you can see, it hasn't cut all the way through on there. Okay, that's all looking good. Um, I'm just going to make one last small adjustment to the line. So we just come in here and I'm just going to widen up this vector here. Ends come out of that. Go across to here, calculate, reset and preview all again. Oh yeah, that's looking better, the line's joined up and that's all good. So now that we're fully happy with the design and it's fitting on our job area, um, we're basically all ready to go and start making or creating the tool paths and checking our tool in. So what the first thing I'm going to do is bring this V carved tool path up. Um, so basically it's kind of in the order of what I'm going to cut. So this will be the first tool path, second tool path, and then the third. We want to come into here, basically check. What I want to do is just quickly check um, the tool setting. So the feeds and speeds for this material and also the machine. So if if you um, basically click the edit button, which I've just done, this will then, you can change the feeds and speeds for this particular tool path. So if you want to make a change globally, you have to go into the tool database and do that. But we just want to tweak the settings if we need to for the material that we're using and the machine. So those are all looking good. You can calculate that one. Reset the preview. As you can see from the red line here on the toolpath preview, it's going to come up and cut here. First of all, we can also preview that by putting the speed right down and then previewing this toolpath. This is quite a handy thing to do so you know where the machine's going to go when it first starts cutting. Okay, then if we speed this up, that's all looking good. Just need to go into the second toolpath, check the settings are all okay, which they look to be. Calculate that. Preview the toolpath. Okay, that's looking all looking good. So the last toolpath is the profile, so the cutout. So the cut depth, so we've got Z plus 0.5, so that's the thickness of the material plus the 0.5, which is good. Just going to check the end mill settings. They all look good. Okay, what we will want to do is, um, as we're going to use screws to hold it down, we're going to need some tabs to, to make sure that this centre bit doesn't come out of the material. So we've got the length and the thickness set, and then we just need to go and edit the tabs. So what you can do is just click on the vector selected um, where you want your tabs to be. This will be holding the material in place while that's cutting. You can also slide them along if you want and then double click to get rid of a tab. So they're all looking good. And then we can calculate that tool path. Um, as I've said, um, we're cutting all the way through the material. So there's this warnings fine. Preview that tool path. And that's all looking really good. I've just made sure that these tabs are thick enough and they look good and they're going to hold the material in place. So all that's left to do now is save off the tool paths and we're going to take the wood over to the machine and start cutting.
So whilst that zombie um, signs on the machine, I'm just going to open up the software again. I'm going to create some more sheets and then create some more options of different signs that you can cut yourself when you download the file. Um, so once that's all finished, I'll get that off the machine. I'll put some more material down and we'll cut some of those and have a bit of fun. But for now, I'm just going to get back into the software. Cool, so they're all done. I've shown you how to make the zombie sign from start to finish, and I've added in some extra signs as well because we had a bit of extra time that will be included in the file if you download it from your VNCO account. This project's compatible with Aspire, VCarb Pro, v and VCarb Desktop, and it's also compatible with the trial versions of those software as well. If you like this project, please give it a like, comment, or subscribe, and happy making.